Hey there, guys. Uh, welcome back to the VoIP guys on introducing Asterix. Last time around, uh, Matthias gave us a very uh, yeah, in-depth but also brief nutshell introduction to uh, NAT and NAT tables, how they work and what they do and so on. And now we're going to have a look at how they impact our SIP connections. Mm -hmm. So, Matthias, why do we need to know this and what can, it, what can NAT actually influence on our SIP connections? Why we need to do this is because otherwise we cannot do phone calls. So that would be bad. a shame. Yeah. Okay. Fair so enough. we should understand it. Okay. Um, so first we have a look. We revisit SIP, mm -hmm. but very very quick. Yeah. Um, this is how SIP works. You can see. <laughs> Why do we need SIP? We explained this a lot quite often al al already. Yeah. So, so in case you don't know. Yeah. Revisit all our tutorials. Uh, yeah, two words. Why, well, not two words. Three words. Why do we need SIP? We need it. Done. Good. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> okay. Um, then this is just something we did already is what does a SIP register do? Mm -hmm. So you have here your PBX, the German word TK-Anlage. 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 Uh, it's your PBX. Hey, we're your getting not only asterisks, we're giving German lessons now too. Yeah. <laughs> All for free. Yeah. <laughs> um, here is the local um, IP address of my um, system and here is some kind of provider. This was the, uh, where the prese presentation was done initially. It's, mm -hmm. It was HFO SIP. Yeah. So this is the IP address of an HFO SIP carrier. You register at the carrier mm -hmm. and what the register does, we mentioned this before but just to repeat it, what the register does is he says to the provider, this is my IP, IP address, mm -hmm. please send the calls to this IP address. Right. And if you do a register like this, then um, in your SIP header, there is in many cases your local IP address. Mm -hmm. But if uh, the provider is intelligent, and most of them, and them are, they look where is the packet coming from, and mm -hmm. this is the IP address where I should send it. Right. If okay. not, there are some other tricks for asterisk. Mm -hmm. You can set your external IP address, and then it is exchanged in the SIP header. Right. Okay. But for now, mm -hmm. in the most cases, you just do a register, and the provider does the right thing, even if you say the wrong thing in your um, in, in in the SIP mm -hmm. invite. But he can see the request is coming from this and that IP address, so for sure he uses NAT. That's, so that's very sure. nice of the providers. Yes, <laughs> this is the IP address where I should send the calls to. Yeah, fair enough. So this is what you should know about SIP, and please revisit our tutorials. Mm -hmm. We covered everything um, about these topics. Right. So all together now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just got a flashback of uh, neighbors or friends or something in my head. Yeah, yeah. You don't know neighbors as an Australian, so, but friends you might know. Yeah, <laughs> true. Um, so I um, added some new things to my um, drawing from the last tutorial. Mm -hmm. um, again, TK Anlage, which means PBX, just in my no local network. And here is my SIP carrier, which is some SIP carrier and has this IP address. So what happens? I register here, and the big question is, do I need source NUT, destination NUT, or both? Okay. So, for sure, I need source NUT, because yes. I have to trans... Otherwise, I could not do an internet connection, mm -hmm. because my local IP address will not be routed. Right, yeah. But some people think, okay, now I register to the provider, I use source NUT mm -hmm. and just for register. Then it's registered and then there is an entry in the NAT table. Mm -hmm. But the entry in the NAT table lives for maybe one minute yep. and then it's deleted because I do just one register one time. Yep. Um, and then most people come up with the idea that you need also destination NUT because if the carrier mm -hmm. sends a call to you, yeah. your NAT table is empty, mm -hmm. so he don't knows what to do. Yeah. So I need destination not also. So they open their SIP ports that's for the, the carrier. That's the thought that came into my head. Am I going to yeah. be wrong? Yes. Damn. Yes, and that, that, that's <laughs> the big mistake. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's not 
a, a mistake in common. Maybe you have to because there are some situations where, where you, you have to do it like this mm -hmm. and destination nut is a good idea. But destination nut is very dangerous because um, many people just open their uh, asterisk ports mm -hmm. to the outside world and do a destination nut, which is also called forwarding, port yep. forwarding mm -hmm. to the inside world. And then um, maybe they restrict it to the IP address of the provider, mm -hmm. but maybe he has many IP uh, addresses because it's a big provider. Yep. And if you register to the name of the carrier, uh, the host which um, answers your requests changes maybe mm -hmm. because of load balancing and stuff like this. And then you say, okay, this is too dangerous. If I only say this particular IP address, maybe the next register is to another host and then he sends from another host um, the answer to uh -huh. my machines. And the next thing uh, which comes into your mind is, okay, then just ignore the IP address. Mm -hmm. I accept every single um, incoming. incoming SIP request. And that's dangerous. That's the death of your system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Because um, there are many port scanners around, um, mm -hmm. which are just testing if there is a SIP port opened yeah. uh, from the outside and then they will do brute force attacks and it works really well yeah. and uh, just don't do it. Um, if you have to use destination nut for whatever, mm -hmm. then please restrict it to the IP range of your provider. Uh, then uh, it's a little bit more secure. Okay. But normally what I want to say, you just don't need it. Use um, source nut, mm -hmm. um, make a register to the provider and the trick is to keep the NAT open, so to not let the entries in your NAT table die. Uh, keep them open. Okay. And mm -hmm. then, um, please go back to the picture, yep. if I ensure that the NAT table knows the connection between my PBX and the SIP provider, uh, then I don't need a destination app because even if I get an inbound call in 10 minutes mm -hmm. and the information is still stored in the NAT table, it just knows what to do with this particular That's packet. quite clever. Yeah, that's what you should do. And therefore, you have to enforce that the NAT table does not forget the t details of your SIP connection. Okay. And that's what we saw before. Um, maybe you remember um, when, 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 when we made the SIP debug on the exactly. Asterisk and CLI. It would send like every 30 seconds a, a new request. New request and mm -hmm. it was called like ping. Yeah. It was sent from the provider yeah. and he called that packet ping and we said uh, 404, I don't know what to do with this packet. Mm -hmm. But that's enough to keep the information in the NAT table valid. And that's why they send every 30 seconds or something like this. That's a very a new nifty packet. trick. Yeah. And that's what you have to understand. Mm -hmm. and. That's, I think, what many people don't understand or did not realize that it works like this. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need destination NAT for your telephony services. Yeah. It could be if you have a, a gaming server or whatever from Google, then you might need it. But yes. for your telephony, you don't. You don't need in most cases. In so most cases. Okay. Uh, be fair, there are some situations where you need it. Okay. Um, maybe if... Uh, so, so what, what could be a potential problem? You register to the host, mm -hmm. which has an IP address, and the answer is sent from another host. Yeah. And sometimes this happens, so uh, your carrier has um, a host where you register, mm -hmm. and all the other packets you get from another host. Mm -hmm. Or everything which is SIP related comes from host A, everything which is RTP comes from host B. Then mm -hmm. this does not work. In some scenarios, you could do a kind of workaround that you register not only to host one mm -hmm. or to host A, but also to host B. And sometimes there is no solution, then you have to uh, do a destination nut from the provider network. Okay, I'm going to ask a stupid question and do some product placement at the same time. Um, with Mobidec, we've got a, a template for eins and eins. Yeah. And in the um, cool configs for the, the cool rules, uh, it has a list of um, various hosts. Yeah. But when we do it for, for, for example, Flowroot, where we did our SIP provider, it's only got a list for one host. Yeah. Is this because of this? This is exactly because of this, because um, some provider just answer with the same IP address. So I register to, they have 
multiple hosts, mm -hmm. but I register to host A, yep. and host A will answer all the time all my questions, mm -hmm. because they know of the problems of NAT. Right. Okay. This special provider mm -hmm. um, is normally, I think, not for SIP trunks, mm -hmm. but for just single SIP accounts, and they have their own infrastructure, okay. so they don't have to care about that, because there are, in most cases, not for commercial users, right. but for private users. Mm -hmm. so, um, they have their own uh, network and they answer with whatever host they want to because of load balancing. Uh -huh. And so we register to all possible hosts. I think there are 30 or something. Yeah, it's, the list is quite long. Yes, yeah. and so we can receive calls from all 30 of them. Okay. But from my experience, most of the provider which uh, are providing you a commercial SIP trunk for commercial use, they mm -hmm. know about the NAT problems for sure yep. and they take care about most of them take care about that you get the answer from the machine which are you, you are registering to. Right. But if not, um, then you run into trouble. And how to debug this? It's relatively easy. Go to your firewall, mm -hmm. um, enable the debug and monitor uh, the IP addresses of the provider mm -hmm. or range or everything which is related to SIP. Do your register and if an incoming call uh, comes in, then see if this is the same IP address as um, yeah. you registered to. Mm -hmm. and then you know the behavior of your provider and uh -huh. something like this. But more, more providers really care about this problem because many people have this problem okay. and then they do it like this. Other providers or other carriers do something else. They sell you um, not only a SIP account which you can use through the internet, mm -hmm. but you get a dedicated SIP line mm -hmm. and then you get um, a box which terminates the network. Yep. And mm -hmm. then you just plug in, okay. and then you don't have the NAT problems. That, we explained that in, I think, in our first SIP yeah. provider tutorial, the difference between a SIP account and a, a SIP trunk. Yes, yeah. SIP account or SIP trunk through the internet, routed mm -hmm. through the internet with yeah. NAT and uh, a dedicated line. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Cool. So, so that's it, and that's what can happen with um, fair NAT. Enough. Okay. Fair enough. So uh, that's it for this presentation today, I think. Mm -hmm. Cool. Good. Uh, what are we going to go on to next time? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but more, a little bit more in depth on this, or um, maybe let's see um, what our uh, uh, viewers say. Okay. Maybe they have yeah. lots of comments and questions. Then mm -hmm. we will figure out um, what they think and. Yeah. Do they understand it or not? And yeah, so let's see what we will do next. If you think we've done a good job, let us know by liking and commenting. If you think we've done a rubbish job, also let us know by liking and commenting. <laughs> 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 right, that's it for uh, today's episode. Um, we will catch you next time around. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Until then, see goodbye. You.